Great. Well, good morning. My name is Alex Rogers, and I am excited to be here today to talk about my research on the temporomandibular joint, or the TMJ. So imagine suffering from debilitating TMJ pain on a daily basis, anytime you open or close your mouth. Well, that's a reality for millions of Americans who suffer from TMJ disorders. And unfortunately, um, there aren't very many effective or curative treatments that are currently available. And the only way to create effective treatments is to better understand what causes TMJ disorders. So one of the proposed etiologies for TMJ disorders is excessive mechanical load. In fact, some dentists are trying to reduce the load that's applied to a joint for patients who suffer from TMJ pain. So think of patients who are put on a soft diet or prescribed an occlusal splint. Another proposed etiology is overactive extracellular matrix proteases. And one protease in particular, ADMTS5, has gotten a really bad reputation with respect to disease in the cartilage. And that's cartilage specifically in your knee and your hip, so hyaline cartilage. In fact, um, others have created systemic ADMTS5 inhibitors to treat disease in hyaline cartilage. However, the TMJ is composed of fibrocartilage. And our recently published work has shown that ADMTS5 is actually really important in the TMJ fibrocartilage. And without ADMTS5 activity, we see massive um, TMJ fibrocartilage defects. So I am curious if in our model where we see defects, would decreasing the load actually serve to be protective? So what I'm doing is investigating the interconnection between mechanical load and ADMTS5 activity. And the way that I'm doing this is through a published decreased load model using our ADMTS5 wild type and ADMTS5 deficient mice. I'm dynamically decreasing the load through lower incisor trimming as well as a soft dough diet. And this occurs over a four week period. And what I found is in the TMJ fibrocartilage, the combination of ADMTS5 deficiency and decreased mechanical load results in harmful, unhealthy cartilage. So we see acellularity as well as a reduction to the hypertrophic zone and a complete diminishment of this important chondrogenic marker called SOX9. I next looked at the subchondral bone with using microcomputed tomography, and I found that there is a significant amount of bone loss. So both um, the fibrocartilage as well as the bone is unhealthy when we have a lack of ADMTS5 as well as decreased load. In fact, in our bone, um, we see a compensatory infiltration of Indian hedgehog expressing bone marrow, which Indian hedgehog is an important marker for osteoblast differentiation. So to conclude, I'll leave you with one final question. Should we be systemically inhibiting ADMTS5? The answer is no. Instead, we need to further research the connection between protease activity and mechanical load. Thank you. And I'll take any questions you have. I'm really bad at this microphone thing. Um, thanks again. Um, so as you know, there's a huge difference between mice and humans. Absolutely. Um, so if you were to theorize or come up with kind of like a clinical application or more like sampling, like what sorts of sample could you harvest from a human that could contribute to um, providing some more information with regards to the study? That's a great question. So absolutely, there are differences, specifically with the way that mice chew. That's very different than how humans chew. Um, so if we were looking at patient samples, um, it would be ideal to look at the condylar cartilage, and we could look at disease tissue and determine the ADMTS5 levels. 
Also, prior to removing that tissue in patients, doing some mechanical testing to determine how much force that they can apply and correlating that with um, Adam TS5 expression. Unfortunately, it's hard to come upon healthy tissue. Most people don't want to donate that, so you'd have to use postmortem, which is definitely different than taking from live patients. Thank you.